It's official. Trump has tapped RFK Jr. to be the next secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services. Here is the lengthy announcement on the president-elect's social media page that says at the very end that Kennedy would make America great and healthy again. Now, whether you agree with him or not, the fact is Robert Kennedy Jr. has had some very controversial opinions about vaccines and food and has made no secret that he has a general disdain for the federal systems this country has built over decades and decades that govern all of these things. His opinions are not just about eating a more healthy diet or reducing childhood obesity levels. Yes, of course, he believes in those things, but his positions definitely go farther than that. And all of those opinions are very important to this discussion because if confirmed, which I'm going to talk about in a second, as Secretary of Health and Human Services, his opinions and thoughts will dictate the safety of all of our food, will dictate vaccines for adults and for your children, will dictate whether certain new or existing drugs are safe and effective and can be used in this country, and will dictate how the United States responds to any type of health emergency. The Health and Human Services Secretary oversees a lot. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, and the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, among several other departments. Now, like all cabinet members, RFK Jr. will have to be confirmed by the Senate. That means he's going to have to sit through the confirmation hearings, a floor debate, and most importantly, we'll have to get a majority of United States senators to vote yes to allow him to hold that job. The reality is, the Senate usually rubber stamps these cabinet members, but when a candidate is controversial, they might look at that candidate a little harder. And there have been some cabinet nominees that didn't make it through the confirmation process for a whole host of reasons. That happened to Presidents Obama and Clinton and Bush, and yes, it happened to Trump in his first term too. And that could be why this second time around, Trump has said he wants the Senate to go around the normal confirmation process for his cabinet members. Instead, he wants to use what are called recess appointments. Now, recess appointments are allowed under the Constitution, which says if the Senate is adjourned, the president can temporarily appoint these cabinet members without the normal Senate confirmation process. Those recess appointments would only last until the end of that congressional term, which in this case would be 2026. It's also worth noting that President Obama was using these recess appointments a lot in his term, so much so that the Supreme Court stepped in. In a unanimous decision in 2014, SCOTUS limited the power of the president to fill cabinet positions through these recess appointments. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays into all of this too. It will also be interesting to watch and see if the Senate decides to go along with Trump and adjourn so that he can make these recess appointments. That is something we're going to all just have to wait and see.